Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. Now, before we get into this video, I want you to watch a video on this car. Check it out. So what you just saw there was this lovely Senator on the dyno, and it happens to be the highest wheel horsepower dyno I've ever seen in my life, and I want to turn it into a bit of a game. Hopefully you've seen, we've just launched the 8speed.au website, it's where we're going to be doing all of our 8HP stuff, everything to do with the 8-speed swaps that you might want to know, might want to buy, will be on there, but... Since this is actually a sponsored video for a different product, I thought I'd turn it into a bit of a competition and I'm going to give away a shirt and also a sticker. So, if you want to win, we want you to guess the horsepower that this thing just made at the wheels. Like I said, it's a big number. Whoever guesses the closest will win the shirt. We're going to do it for seven days and just keep it at a whole horsepower number. No decimal places are needed. Whoever guesses first wins or whoever gets the closest after seven days wins and we'll play the rest of that dyno run in the next follow-up video. Guys, right, let's get into this video because it's a product that I've I've strangely fallen in love with, even though that's not what the video intended back in 2020. Let's talk about these brakes. So if you're new to Zero to 60, you probably have no idea what these are or why I happen to have a set of Chinese brakes. Uh, long story short, back in 2020, I saw these brake kits on AliExpress and to be honest, I haven't gone up much, but these to be around 3,000 US dollars and I needed a set of brakes for one of our cars and to get an off-the-shelf rotor and pad upgrade wasn't far off. To put decent rotors and decent pads on my E92 at the time was getting close to this amount. Oh, that included doing brake lines and that sort of stuff. And I thought, why not? Let's take a punt at the Chinese things and show the internet how bad they are. Uh, I figured it might make some views, but I didn't expect it to be as popular as it did. And I kind of chewed into dick ass. Well, they're called die case now, but back in 2020, they were dick ass. And I was very brutally honest about the product, the fact that there were feminine issues, and I expressed my concerns for longevity and how they were going to last on the car. However, after 12 months of those brakes being on my car, and I was concerned about rusting and that sort of stuff because that kit did go particularly rusty, I actually got a chance to see a genuine set of Brembo's, I think it was, and they were a similar age to my Chinese ones, and they looked just as rusty. It gave me a little bit more confidence. I got back in touch with Die Case and said, what's your new brakes? What have you got offer now? And in 2021, at the end of 2021, we had our second set of Chinese brakes. I put them through their paces as well, and I've got to be honest, I can't fault them. The biggest issue I found with these brake kits, well, aside from the fitment issues, which they've worked out now, the biggest issue I find are the brake pads. When you buy these as a entry-level kit, the brake pads they supply are not great. Uh, and let's be real, they're pretty cheap brake pads. I think they're around 100 US for a full set of brake pads for the entry level. What I did on the second set was upgrade the pads, and this set is their latest caliper, which, let's be real, I'm sure it's a... Uh, a version of somebody else's caliper that's been remade and it's also got their latest brake pad set their 3000 series so we're going to see how it is and there's also some updates to the rotors but i did check what's in the box although i didn't have a good look so let's open it up and see what they're supplying these days now die case much like me because they've given me these latest cases apparently if you spend an extra 60 dollars when you place your order they'll actually supply the brake kit in these Aluminium cases, it's kind of cool, but not needed. Now these are their Spider Series. This is the front set, and I guess it's time to have a proper look. All I have done is just taken the plastic off. They come in a plastic bag when they arrived. In fact, I think there was a guy here that was having a bit of a look at them. Uh, initial impressions, these things are massive, and they're heavy as well. This is an aluminium caliper, but there is a lot of weight there. It has got the pads in it. It's also got the hardware on there. And it's huge. Now, these are a monoblock caliper. The one, the first set that I had back in 2020 are monoblock. The second set I had were two-piece. The one thing I do like about the two-piece calipers is you can change the pads without taking the caliper off the car, which is great if you're doing an endurance race. Let's be real, we're doing these because they look cool, not because of the performance. <laughs> Apparently, monoblock is better, and they've gone back to their monoblock version for their latest series, which is called the Spider Series, and it has got die case in the casing right there. So something I have got to say about the Chinese companies, uh, Dick Ars, I think was a joke. Uh, there was another Chinese company that I was dealing with sort of 10 years ago and they had a brand of radiators and they thought it was hilarious to call them 69. Uh, the humor is a bit, a bit different to ours when it comes to products and trying to be professional. But anyway, they started off as Dick Ars, they're now, then they went to Dick Ace and now they are die case. They've gotten rid of the K altogether on some of their branding. Like there, but not there. You gotta love them. 
Let's not pick on them for the way that they write their name. Let's pick on them for the products. So, something that I have noticed about this, they are now supplying, and I'll get the camera just to come in close. They are now supplying things like washers. Uh, there looks like there's actually thread tape on the nipple. The very first series I had, somebody said that they'd also purchased them and they would have issues with these leaking. I never had them leak, but they have now got thread tape in there. Stainless steel fittings, stainless steel pins. They must be the new series of brake pad. Let's see if I can wiggle a brake pad free. Oh no, that's the 2000 series brake pad. Okay, they were supposed to send me the 3000. We'll delve into that shortly. We now have stainless steel bits where the pad will essentially sit on the caliper, and I guess that's to stop rubbing through. Not that the caliper's gonna go rusty. It's got a QC sticker, so it must be good. Stainless steel lines, a little bit of rubber down there where it might rub. Look, they're putting a lot more effort into stopping things rubbing. And I can also see, I'm noticing they have now got quality control marks. So somebody's actually checking them as they go together. Nice. Also this area where the brake lines go into, they used to paint over the whole thing. Now they are masking it off so you're not getting any paint on the threads. They're taking a bit more care. Okay, I do like it, I do like it. So that's the front calibers. Let's just have a quick look at what hardware they supply. That's heavy. That's really heavy. Why is that? Okay. All right. There's more brake pads. Are these the 3000 series? I bet they are. We'll open that in a minute. There's another set of brake pads in there. That'd be why they're so heavy. These are the brake lines. These look like the same lines that I got at the end of 2021. Yes, they are. So the first brake lines that they supplied, I haven't had any issues with them, even though they are now three years old, but these are an upgrade. So we've got some rubber sort of protection where the braided line goes onto the fitting. The fitting is a nice quality stainless steel fitting. And the line is quite stiff. It's not overly flexible. I'm not sure on the internal dimension. Okay, quite a small internal dimension, but a solid nice braided line. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that's what they used in 2021. I know they're good, they sit good, they don't rub on anything. It's nice they're taking care of that. And I've just noticed, this is new, instructions and directions. Directions, not erections, Mr. Dickass. Huh. Wow. Okay, they actually come with instructions. Something I did say in all of my brake series videos, fitting brakes is dangerous if you mess it up. If you get a brake line loose and you don't notice, it might not be an issue for a month or two, you'll go to stop and you will have a crash. I mean, it's nice that they're providing instructions, but you really shouldn't be doing this unless you know what you're doing. Right, let's check out the rear caliper. So these are the rear ones. I haven't, I don't even think I took these out of the plastic. I haven't had these for two weeks. Sorry, die case for taking so long to get to it. So the rear caliper, I should have said, the front calipers are six piston calipers and we're pairing them with a 380 mil rotor. The rear is a four piston caliper, again, mono block, and it's gonna be going on a 355 mil rotor. Look, much of a muchness. The paint's quite nice. Stainless steel pins, anti-rattle clips. They've done the same masking. I can't see the thread tape on the bleed nipples, but maybe it's there. It's also got the rubber protection down the bottom. They have stepped it up. They've stepped the quality up. It's like they're learning. Who would have thought? Uh, again, it's quite heavy. It's quite heavy. If you're interested in the weights, let me know and I will weigh them and I'll put it in the comments. Now, what did they supply in here? This also feels like it's got brake pads. Okay, we've got the line kit again, and then more brake pads. These are obviously the rear ones. Interesting. Hopefully they are the 3000 series. Uh, something that Donut Media didn't mention. Donut Media actually recently reviewed die case brakes. They did it in their um, cheap versus expensive challenge. They used the cheap pads, and they didn't talk about pad selection at all. If they'd have used an upgraded pad, and you don't need to use the Chinese pads, although the 2000 series I actually quite like for the money, they're spot on for track and road use. However, as these are generally based off another brand of brake, you can normally pop down to your local Repco uh, Napa Auto Parts and get a pad made by any pad manufacturer to suit these calipers, and die case will let you know which ones you need to go for. Right, the rotors, because they're getting pretty cool as well. 
Okay, so these two boxes have just four rotors in them. Two in this and two in there. These are the fronts, these are the rears. Now on all of the sets, oh my god, they are so heavy. I reckon that's got to be 20 kilos. On all of the brake sets that I've ordered from Diecase, I've gone for a floating front rotor. So that just means that the hub is not directly bolted to the disc itself. We've got these little spaces that allow for heat expansion. And even if you're doing circuit and coffee events and obviously normal track days, repeated stops, it just helps the hub expand or the hat expand at a different rate to the rotor. And it's not all fighting itself as it expands at different temperatures. However, for the rears, which I assume don't get as hot, and I, they generally don't get as hot rear brakes. That is just directly bolted to the disc, uh, so it's not a floating hat. And that does save about a hundred US dollars when you order them from Dickace, Diecase, Dickass, when you do it that way. Uh, the thing that is new and cool, that it was pitched to me as a reflective rotor. So if you've been following the series of Porsche Genuine Brakes, I think in 2012 they brought out a technology where they have a reflective brake rotor, and I'll put a picture of it up in the corner. Uh, this was Diecase's attempt at it. All of the photos they showed me, they look nicer. In person, it has just got a coating on it. I did ask them how long the coating's gonna last, and they said they couldn't give me an accurate bit of information on that but they did say the more you use them, the quicker it will wear away. We'll see how it goes. It kind of looks like it's been electroplated or something, but hopefully it stops the brake rotor going rusty. Something that was an issue with a few people in 2020, because the pads don't touch the very inner one or two millimeter of the rotor, they were getting a rust ring right around near the hat. Now, obviously they're steel, and if you get rainwater on them, they will go rusty. I'm sure you've washed your car and noticed your rotors go rusty. But when you've got these really nice calipers and these huge discs, that rust ring was a bit off-putting. When I fitted mine in 2020, I was aware of the issue. The Brembo's and all the genuine ones do do it as well. I actually clear-coated the rotor and then that little protection that doesn't get rubbed off with the pads stayed clean. However, this coating should do it for us. It'll be interesting to see how it lasts. Although, I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna be a few months before these really get put through a torture test because they're not going on the fastest car in the world for now but they will look good. Okay, I think that is pretty much it. So there we have it, the latest brakes from, I can't not say it, Dickass, Diecase, I'm sorry guys. Uh, and something I do just wanna say about the company Diecase, in 2020, I sort of slaughtered them. Uh, I was really annoyed with how, even though I asked them about fitment issues on AliExpress, uh, I was really annoyed how they still sent me brakes that didn't fit, and then when I was trying to resolve that issue through AliExpress, it was just a bit of a nightmare. Uh, once I actually got in touch with people from Diecase themselves, people that work at the factory, the experience has been really good. And when we went through all those dramas last year with getting kicked out of the rental, and a few of you guys know what's going on, I told the rep from Diecase that I speak to, and they said, if there's anything they can do to help, they will. Um, and it was, it was just nice. They had my back. I do kind of like the way they're doing it. These days, they're trying to develop their product and make it better. I don't like that their business was essentially started from copying Brembo's. Uh, that does kind of suck. If you're buying brakes from China, don't buy the fake Brembo's. And if you're buying what you think are genuine Brembo's, make sure you know they are genuine Brembo's. I was talking to a guy the other day and he said he could pick up a set of genuine Brembo's for exactly what these cost. And I was just like, they're not genuine. They are not genuine. Genuine Brembo's are easy twice the price of these. Um, but I kind of think these are 90% of the way, 90% of the way to being just as good. Um, and they will, they will put something else on there than Dick Ace. You can custom make them. Um, you don't have to have Dick Ace on your calipers. But hey, hopefully that logo is gonna be one that gets linked to a quality product, not a cheap one or not a joke one like it was when I started doing videos about them. Uh, and I'm looking forward to having them on my car. In all the years I've had them on the car, I've had nothing but confidence. And when we used to take them racing, we've done a lot of stops from over 200 kilometers an hour and they, they, just, they just do what you need them to do. They inspire confidence at high speeds. And when you upgrade the pads, they work nicely around town as well. All right, I'm gonna end it off there. There will be another video on these when we bolt them onto the car. Uh, they're going onto a diesel. I know it seems strange, but it'll make sense in a, in a few months. And uh, it's a fitment that I know Diecase haven't done before. So we'll see if they're a bit better with their fitment now. Uh, because they do do brakes for pretty much every maker model on the road. <sighs> and we'll go from there. Guys, it's hot. It's Saturday. No one's at work. But at least that thing made a lot of power. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. If you've got any questions about these, just let me know. And I will put a link to uh, basically get in contact with Diecase directly. Don't waste your time with AliExpress resellers. Go straight to the factory 
those guys know what they're talking about and they might direct you to a seller, but at least you'll be getting the right information straight away. And if you want to win the 8speed.au t-shirt, and we've got them in all sizes, uh, make sure you have a guess at what power the Senator made. And it, oh, just to know, it, anywhere in the world, whoever wins, wherever you are, we will post that shirt out and the sticker. And thank you all for getting involved. We'll catch you on the next one.